Hello and welcome to this tutorial session on drug induced interval enlargement in the professional dental aid class. In this tutorial, we will be looking mainly at the clinical features of this pathology. As the name implies, this gingival enlargement or gingival overgrowth is quite a common consequence of certain drug administrations, and there are three well defined drug categories that are implicated. There are the anticonvulsants, the immunosuppressants, and antihypertensives, especially the calcium channel blockers. For each of these three categories, you should be able to enumerate at least two agents that have been associated with the overgrowth. For the anticonvulsant, we will have the well known antiepileptic phenytoin or dilantin, which causes this enlargement in over 80% of cases. And then we have the broad spectrum anti seizure medication, sodium valproate or dipacon. Now beware that not all patients taking these medications have a seizure disorder because these also have been approved for the treatment of neuropathic pain syndromes. The main immunosuppressant responsible for gingival overgrowth is cyclosporin A used especially following renal transplantation. The other one I'd like you to keep in mind is Staculimus, even though its tendency to cause this side effects is very much on the low side. In fact, Staculimus is often used as a replacement drug in patients suffering from cyclosporine induced gingival enlargement. Finally, for the calcium channel antagonists, we have nifedipine and amlodipine, both of which are dihydroperidine subclasses of calcium channel blockers. Now, there are other drugs, but we will only look at them when we actually look at the etiopathogenesis of drug induced gingival enlargement. Let's move our attention now to look at the clinical features of this condition. The onset of the swelling from the initial commencement of the implicated therapy can range from only a few weeks to a few months. However, most cases typically occur within the first three months, with growth beginning almost always in an interdental location. So for instance, when we take a look at this case, the growth would have started from these interdental regions before spreading lingually and labially to involve the marginal gingiva and sometimes to include the attached gingiva. When all the interdental areas are involved in the initial stages, the gingiva assumes a bead-like characteristic, which distorts the normal gingival architecture. So as you can see in this case, these globular interdental enlargements of the papillae are the so-called bead-like characteristics. Overall, the swelling is generally firm and the color may range from normal to pale or in extreme cases of inflammation will exhibit a fiery red coloration and may bleed spontaneously or with minor manipulation. Nevertheless, pain is often not a feature and patients usually only complain about aesthetics and oral malodor. Because the condition makes the maintenance of a good oral hygiene difficult, gingival and periodontal infection are not uncommon. The enlargement creates a pseudopocket, which can then lead to gingival separation and inflammation, and therefore pain, as was the case in this patient. The pain and swelling retards further cleaning, and this worsens the whole condition with the establishment of a vicious cycle of events. This is because the swelling is generally aggravated by inflammation resulting from a poor dental hygiene. Now, it has been known for some time that drug-induced gingival enlargement occur only in dented patients. Well, this is largely true because majority of cases indeed begin interdentally in dented areas of the mouth. However, I'd like you to keep in mind the possibility of the condition occurring in completely dentalized patients. This case is a 70-year-old male on daily nifedipine therapy for hypertension. This lesion developed a few years following the start of his nifedipine. Alright, now to summarize. We mentioned that drug-induced gingival enlargement is usually a painless and generalized disorder. That the start from the papillary regions of the gingiva is firm and pure in non-inflamed sites but can be erythematous, soft and painful during inflammation. We said it is made worse by a poor dental hygiene and we also listed briefly some of the implicated medications. One thing that I think I forgot to mention is the fact that the enlargement is usually more extensive in the anterior regions of the jaws as demonstrated in this example. This case 
is amlodipine induced. Alright, this brings us to the end of this tutorial session. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take good care.